my boy on the piano is right there. I love. All right, so I think that the album, on a scale, on a one to ten scale, would be or a rating of one to ten. I would give it a solid seven point five. Okay, for my opinion, just because of the amount of songs that I had to skip, me personally. Okay, somebody from a different rock walk of life isn't going to skip the same songs that I'm going to skip or may not skip any songs at all. Okay, now before I even continue this shit and, 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 and my opinions and I want to see what y'all think. Okay, um, Illinois, DJ Illinois says at eight, Rock Boy, what you think of the album right here? CLB, give me a rating. I gave it a rating right now of a 7.5. I want to know what y'all think. What do y'all rate the album? Okay, I'm going to start this by saying Drake cannot make a classic album. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Drake cannot make a classic album. All right. I don't know if this is a hot take. I don't know if um, some, this is something that is. Uh, I'm, I'm just realizing right now, like an epiphany. Well, you see Rockboy Ninja and Rockboy Ninja jumped in the chat saying um, he can if it's R&B. Well, that's my point. He can't make a classic album for everybody, but he makes music for everybody. So there's a conundrum right there. He runs into like a little bit of a dilemma because who are you trying to please? What kind of classic album are you trying to make? So if you wanted to make a classic hip hop album, you know, you can sing a couple of hooks, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, just make sure that the bulk of the album is you barring it down. Even if you've got some songs that are just for the gal them, you're rapping on that song, right? And, you know, you know, you do the, the girl rap tune, like the, the, um, the obligatory girl rap tune that everybody has on their album. They'll put like maybe a couple of them, you know, for the gal them. And, they, you know, they, they talk to them, but they're rapping, Okay. He can do that for whatever amount of songs, let's say 14 to 15 songs. And he will have a classic rap album. Same with the R&B. He gives you 15 slappers, R&B slappers, all singing. He gets some slow songs in there that, you know, really get people in the mood to do some baby making. You know, he gives you your faster songs so you can dance to, but no rapping. He may rap maybe at the end of one song or two, just to be like, you know, uh, you know, here's a, here's a little eight bar. Or here's a 16. And that would be a classic R and B album. Classic. But it's an R and B album. Drake does both. He makes R&B. He makes hip hop. Okay. Not just rap. Hip hop. He makes um, what becomes pop music. You know, sometimes it's even a little bit more intentional. Like Way Too Sexy, that's intentionally a pop song to me. You took the right said Fred, I'm Too Sexy. You remixed it. You, that was already a pop song. And you got Future and Young Thug, who are super extra popular. And you intentionally made a pop song. So if you made 12 Way Too Sexies, Becky in Richmond Hill is peachy keen. She's loving it. You see me? But we're not doing that. We're doing everything. Way too sexy. Poppy's home. Champagne poetry. 7 a.m. in bridal path. Fucking fans. That's a. And then you know we're gonna get international and go to the hookah club. Fountains with Thames. Like, that's like mad genres on what. Salute to my homegirl, Pretty. She was like, yo, man didn't even drop a, um, a reggae tune on this one. You know what I'm saying? 
that for your love. That's a reggae tune. One dance. I need a one dance. I need a one dance. He didn't even give you one of those. He gave you so much different types of genres that he even forgot, like, oh, fuck, I, got, I forgot to get, my, get in my Drizzy Marley bag. You know what I'm saying? As access. So, like, he can't make a classic album. It's not a knock. It's not a diss. It's just his expectations are too high to be able to please all of his fan bases at the same time without having some of his fan bases saying, nah, man, that's a skip. That's not my type of shit. If you're a lyrical guy or a lyrical um, rap lover and then fucking fucking fans comes on, you're going to be like, fam, yo, there's too much mans in the room to be listening to this, bro. And you're going to have to skip. It's not because the song's whack. It's because it's not for that demo, that demographic. Right? So when you're trying to please multiple demos on one album, okay, it's one thing if you're dropping a tune and you're like, you guys get pleased. And then you drop another tune and you're like, one for you guys. Okay? But now when you're taking all of the tunes that you do, you know what I mean? You're out there making tunes in the world and getting people, you know, making the dance go on. It's creating the different moods and vibes for different environments. And now you're like, okay, time to put that in a body of work. That becomes a fucking task because you got the critics on your head top. Like, does Drake have a crit? Does Drake have a classic album? Well, of course not. He has a classic R and B album, maybe somewhere. People say "Take Care" is a classic. Or am I tripping? Which does Drake have a classic album? Let me know in the comments, okay? Because I don't think that it's possible for him to make a classic album because of the expectations. You know what I'm saying? It's just, if he's trying to make one, it's going to be a, a feat that he can't achieve because there's always going to be somebody who's like, nah, fam, I don't like that song. That's not for me. So the only way that he'll be able to make classic albums is if he starts splitting his genres. Like he gets to the point where he's making, he's so comfortable, he's so on top of the game because he's still pleasing everybody per album. Don't get me wrong, Drake is at the top of the game. He's the top rapper in the world. But when he drops, he's still trying to prove and trying to please different fan bases. He's still at that point. There's still expectations um, monetarily. <coughs> and benchmarks that they need to hit billboard and all these different things right now so he's not in it's not that he's not in the position he can do an album where like fuck it i'm just gonna make a whole boom bap album me and primo we're gonna lock in i don't give a fuck about how much money i'm losing out on from the r&b fans he has enough money i would feel at this point to probably do that but it's not like just do it because some fans want it. No, I still need to make more money. I still need to make myself. I'm not, if Kanye is a billionaire and he's not, then he can't just do whatever he wants yet. Okay. And I'm not his lawyer. I'm not, you know, I don't like to speak for the man them, but like, he's not in a position to just do whatever he wants. There's still expectations. There's still, I got to give you an R and B. I got to give you this amount of hip hop songs. I got to address this person before we finish an album. This person needs to get addressed too. You know what I'm saying? So there's a whole bunch of things that people are waiting for. So he can't just say, oh, I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want because I already have enough money. Doesn't work that way, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? My, maybe five years from now, um, you'll get an album where Drake says, you know what? Fuck my hip hop fans for the next year. And all I'm giving you is a song, is an album that just has all R&B bangers. And all the R&B heads are like, thank you, finally. We love Drake when he gets in his singing bag. We, you finally gave us what we needed. An album of all Drake R&B bangers. But I'm not going to be fucking happy. I'm sure Rockboy Ninja ain't going to be happy. He's going to be like, what the fuck? 
Man has no rap songs. Like Tory Lanez is doing stuff like that. You know, he'll have his like chick tapes and R&B album this, and then I'm gonna get back to my rap album that. But he doesn't have the same type of pressure on his back that Drake does. He's not the top, 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 top of the fucking ladder, right? So he's still like building what you're gonna be looking forward to him moving forward. So if he decides, oh, I'm making an album of just all rap today, his fan base won't be like, what the fuck? What are you doing, Tori? It'll just be like, okay, Tori's just rapping for an album. He's going to do another one in the next four months. Drake doesn't drop four, an album every four months. Okay? The record label, everybody doesn't fucking have time to fucking stop the fucking presses every four months for Drake to drop a whole album. So there has to be a once a year type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Because like a lot of wheels have to turn and move and you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of expectations and Ray Tay Tay before the man puts out the full body of work. That's why bef- between there, he didn't give you ones that were like, you know, let's critique this and say, yo, this is Drake's best. No, he gave you the, the Dark Lane mixtapes, which are a whole bunch of leaks and, and like some extra shit that, you know, mm, couldn't work, maybe might not work. You know what I'm saying? And there was some, there was some tracks on there, but... It wasn't for you to critique and be like, is this a Drake classic? No, it's a mixtape, right? Same thing with the um, the album with the trash cover with the fucking, the leaks or the, the, the lost tapes um, Drake album or whatever. You guys know what I'm talking, help me out here, comment gang, please. Let me find this shit. Album cover was trash. Holy care package. It's not to be judged on a yo. Is this a Drake classic? No. These are all songs that he already dropped before that were on SoundCloud in different places, and he just aggregated them all into one place. Boom. Thank you. You know, if you're a Drake fan, now you can listen to that. You know what I'm saying? The cover is. Oh my god. Like it's so dark, fam. Like. Look at this. Why would you do this? Sometimes I think the men are trolling. But who are they trolling? Look at this. It's a Benz or Bentley or whatever. <laughs> but it's like, behind, you know, the headlights are on. I guess this is the, <laughs> the, 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 the light. <laughs> It kind of looks like a smiley face. We couldn't figure out where to put the parental advisory. Couldn't put it like over here in the corner. So let's just slap it in the middle where the license plate should be. And like add a font. We're done. Is that is that the album cover? Um, guys? Yeah, 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 yeah. Send it out. Are you sure? Yes. Uh, why are we still on the phone? Okay. And then it dropped. Right? He doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't care about the fucking. The, like he likes these so- songs. Off. He's like the motions on here. There's some bangers on this. But it's not enough to be like, yo, let me get the fucking artist there. Um, the, the that the guy who did the fucking CLB cover that does like mad fucking crazy paintings that sell for millions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? Let me go get that guy to go fucking do the cover for the care package. No. You guys went to Kinko's and made this cover. Or you took one of the covers from back in the days and it already was called Care Package because, you know, the Kinko's cover, you can't, like, modify it already. It's already, it's, a, it's already pressed, right? So you took a picture of the Kinko's cover and you sent it in. You added the parental advisory. Done. Done. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> DJ Illinois says they were high off the loud at 7 a.m. on the bridal path when they made the cover. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's lazy. Let's just put it. Give them the one with the with the Bentley cover, with the Bentley grill. Regin, fam, like pass the blunt, fam, like yo, walk one. So yeah. He can't make a classic. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. It's just not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, 